You know, to a scientist, a real beach is much more than just sand at the edge of the ocean. This is not a beach to me. It's a strip of wet sand. Well, welcome to our Nissan VS200 taxi. <laughs> <laughs> that we have dubbed the Wave Maker. How long have you guys uh, worked together, known each other? I think since what, like 1996 or seven. Yeah. So the obvious question, I mean, how, how are you seeing things change for better or for worse? Obviously people are aware of the threat of sea level rise in the Hawaiian Islands, right? We're an island, our shorelines are eroding. We're extremely vulnerable to sea level increase. Royal Hawaiian Beach that we're going to visit is not a natural beach and it hasn't been for half a century or more. It's been nourished many, many times with sand. It's good that we're looking at Waikiki because Waikiki is an element in sort of an overall strategy, how we're going to manage our beaches throughout the state. And Waikiki is uh, sort of the center of the tourist visitor economy, you know, and we have to maintain it, right? We can't, you know, we have to think about how we're going to manage to save the beach in, a, in an age of rising sea level. And we're here. In this case, I think a lot of it boils down to a benefit-cost ratio. And if it's worth several hundred million dollars a year, then it's worth putting several million dollars a year into it. I think you could continue to nourish this beach even with a foot higher of sea level. Um, but at the same time, you're going to start having salt water coming out of the storm drains. At the highest tides of the month and of the year, you'll see pools of salt water on the street. Is the hotel industry thinking about sea level rise? Are they just trying to ignore it right now? Well, should we hit it? All right. We're heading to Kahala now. What kind of sea level rise related things are we gonna see here? This area was developed historically and then it went through a redevelopment process. A lot of the homes or structures were built very close to the ocean. And so um, they are all experiencing to varying degrees a serious uh, erosion. There's a lot of pressure now that we're getting from them to protect their property, to protect their investments. And so once again, we're in, a, we're in a situation where we're gonna have to think about choosing between whether helping coastal property owners or protecting the sandy beaches of the state, you know. So one of the things that's going on here is that the dune, the sand dune, has been landscaped out of existence. Okay. The beaches are going and going and going. If you put in a seawall here, um, you're cutting off sand that would be eroded off of the land and as part of the sand sharing system, but you also cause accelerated erosion immediately um, along shore from the, the wall. And the longer the wall, property by property by property, the deeper the erosion and the longer the erosional effect. My, I don't know, observation is that there is, especially in a new generation of folks coming up, like a, a lot more interest, a lot more engagement in this issue. And some have cited it as a reason for, for hope. Is that something you guys have experienced? I mean, you're interacting with the community all the time and students. My experience is the students are concerned. They want to know, they pay attention. Being a college student is a time full of angst and anxiety because you need to go out, find a job, yeah, I'll get married, I'm like, do, am I going to have kids, how am I ever going to buy a house or a car and all this and then, oh yeah, solve climate change, let's just layer that right on top. Okay. 